Are we ready though? What's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Kahuna Silver right here on YouTube once again. And you know what, man? We're gonna be playing some Mario 3D World. I'm in a Mario mood today. Let's go ahead and jump right into the E3 reviews. Okay, the E3 reviews. Okay, so we're gonna start out with Ubisoft. Okay, the reason why we're gonna start off with Ubisoft is the fact that they had a fantastic E3 showing, man. I'm, I mean, good me. I did not expect um, Ubisoft to, you know, be as good as they was. See. They started out their E3 with the Rabbits vs. Mario game. Yes, that they crossover that everybody claimed they don't want, but now everybody wants it. I mean, I admit, I was one of those people, man. I was claiming I don't want it. I didn't think of it could be actually dope, but man, when we actually see the gameplay of it, man, oh my, it was absolutely wow. Okay. So, <laughs> with this Mario, um,. Game that's coming out for um Switch, just um Mario Rabbit's game. I understand it, all right. But a lot of people who play XCon does. So I'm thinking, hey, look, if it's like XCon, then it might be like Code Name, you know, Steam. Um, Code Name Steam man is like one of Nintendo's new IPs that, that um, they introduced with um, I can't say um when. But like it was way back in I forgot the when when that game was released. But Conan Steve was a um a action platformer, not an action platformer, uh, a RPG, a turn based um strategy RPG game. Like it was like how can I say like turn based like it, it had you um free roaming around the map, which I thought was awesome. So it was like a like you take a turn, this person can take a turn, turn, then I can keep going. I just can't explain it, but it had all these fictional characters from books and literature. But it was a cool, you know, kind of game. So I think if people saying it's like stuck on code name Steam, well, if it's like code name Steam, then it can't it can't be all that bad now. Um, so. With this, um, I kind of, I kind of sort of get the, um, I kind of sort of um, get the, um, the gist of it with, just with that description alone. So I didn't play XCon, XCon, but I did play, um, what's that name? Um, Code Name Steam, which a lot of people recognize. So I guess that's how this game going to be. Uh, it's, it's it looks in depth like it looks like an in depth um, R, um RPG strategy game, which I think is amazing. So Mario and Rabbids Battle Kingdom is is on, definitely on my radar. Just like the Switch is um it's on my radar. So with that game out of the way, let's talk about what else you. Man, they show Assassin's Creed, man. Assassin's Creed. Origins, man. We didn't see this game about five times throughout E3, man. I'd be surprised uh, Sony didn't show it, but Microsoft and um freaking um Ubisoft showed it. Well, Ubisoft, of course, they was gonna show it. So Assassin's Creed, yeah, you get the gist of that. Uh, it's, it looks good, great, man. Eh, it's Assassin's Creed. <laughs> okay, so they premiered a new game called um. Skulls and Bones, which is like a pirate game. Me, I fell asleep during that. Um, I fell asleep during that. Woke up at the end of that um game, cause I realized I had fell asleep, and then I um just got up randomly and just, you know, uh, I watched the rest of the E3 man. So I woke up to basically the end of Skulls and Bones. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember what um game was after that I think not cool single part of your um your presentation and all you can do is put curse words in there man just to make it sound edgy and cool bro no it that jump sucks bro it's y'all y'all wilding man y'all wilding it's <laughs> it wasn't funny 
and it wasn't um you know classy man you're at a presentation man i don't care how many thoughts are in the room just because you, you're saying cuss words to see a game man that doesn't make me want to buy your game man i'm adult i'm adult you're adult everybody in this room is adult little kids in the room because little kids I don't know if they go to E3 or not. I don't know if they stay home all day and watch Call of Duty film. Or so but <laughs> anywho I can't really you know say uh I'm really into the fresher butthole like I was with um Stick of Truth because I found Stick of Truth very very funny compared to this one I just can't see the humor in it. It's South Park no doubt but uh this game though so let's talk about um the next game they showed which was a mobile phone game for um south park which i thought was man it's a card game for south park on um on freaking um ios and all that stuff man i was like man you don't get this mess up my face i don't care about this i mean somebody will but i definitely don't <laughs> So with that, man, South Park had a good E3 showing. Um, I'm still interested in the Stick of Truth, so I don't, I, I, I can't exactly say if I'm truly interested or not, man. It's just, it's, 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 it feels like it's gonna take a lot of me just to enjoy that game. Just to say, I actually like that game, man. But um, Stick of Truth was a better game. Just saying. So another thing, another game that they showed was Just Dance. It's just for casual kids. That's all. It is. It's a dancing game. That's all the kids like to play. I would never buy it, but you know what it is. So Just Dance. Okay. So let's get out of that part. And then next they show a new game called Starline. I think that's the name of it. But it looked it good. It, it's running on the Snowpoint engine. The Snowpoint engine. And you know, it was, how can I say, a good game. So the, the game is coming out the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and um, Nintendo Switch. That surprised us. <laughs> the game is a, a Toys to Life game. Yeah, you thought we were done with those? No. The Toys to Life um, line is still kicking, man. Well, be honest, if Amiibo ain't gone, then Toys of Life, man, it's still here. That's that's the best I can put it, man. Toys of Life gaming is still here, from much I can tell. So when you actually look at the um, well, um, what they were doing with that game, it, it, it looked interesting to say the least. It looked interesting, man. It, it caught my interest. I don't know if it caught anybody else's interest, but. It definitely caught my interest. Um, I if when I get my Switch, I may pick that game up. I may pick that game up. So for next, for out of there, man, it's freaking um for next um I, um game up, man. It's freaking what's that game? Steep. Steep is up next. Steep. Um, it's that snowboarding game. They're showing. I think it's the Olympics DLC. They were showing, man, it really didn't, you know, catch my interest, but I thought they was about to say something about the Switch version, but they didn't, <laughs> but they didn't say nothing about the Switch version, so I cut that off real quick. So, I think the next game and the last game they presented off, oh no, I forgot the game, I forgot about the crew too, so they added in more to the crew, they added in like some freaking, um, Speed boats, motorcycles, and stuff to the crew. So it's more than just a how can I say? It's more than just uh, I didn't mean to go back into that level. Then an open world um, car game. So who knows? So who knows, man? The crew too may be an awesome game this year, man. I, I want to see more of the crew too, man. I didn't really care for the crew. It was the most next gen, most next gen console. I'll say, if you can't just put this game on Wii U, PlayStation 3, and uh, Xbox 360, you don't get that excuse out of my face. 
Man, I was bad about that. But you know what? The crew look, looks like it's going to be an awesome game. And I, personally, they, they missed me with this game the first, the first, uh, first time around. So, who knows? Second time around, they may actually hook me. Okay, so the next game that I want to talk about, man, is freaking, um... I'm saying freaking a lot. I just found realized that I'm in. So, forgive me. I'm trying to get all my... For the, for this, and you know, I'm just trying to go off the top of my head what they had. So the next game that they showed off was on. Um, what was the next game they showed off? Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to go. I think. Look, because I'm so impatient, I'm forgetting games. I want to get to this one so badly. Man, let me go ahead and just talk about it, man. I'm forgetting games because I I want to talk about this game so badly. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and just talk about this game so I can finally get off my chest and move on to Sony. But I got some things to say about Sony. Okay, guys. Apparently, the rumors has been true about Beyond Good and Evil coming. However, it's still to say is this a Switch time exclusive or is it exclusive at all? We don't even know what systems is going to be for, man. So, so with, with Beyond Good and Evil, it's coming out. You know, if you played the first one, uh, you know the story behind Beyond Good and Evil. I barely played the first one. I got it on my play, my computer, and I can still play it. I'm just not fond of a um, PC controller. I like a normal controller, so that's why I haven't beaten that game yet. That's why I haven't beaten that game yet. So, with um, Beyond Good and Evil, man, a lot of people was happy about it. I was happy about it because I'm saying, like, I, I'm playing Beyond Good and Evil right here on my PC. And you know what, man? I like what I'm playing here. It's not enough. It's not a full experience because I'm playing it with keyboard and a mouse, which is painful. But I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. So, they're going to make a good Beyond Good and Evil, too, man. I just can't wait, man. I can't wait to play it, man. Um, so the game comes out sometime. This is now starting development. But I gotta say something about this presentation, man. It was really emotional for people, man. The developers on Mario Rapids um, Kingdom got emotional when Miyamoto came on stage. It was like seeing your, your childhood hero, man. Congratulate your work, man. Like, let's say, like, if you were the person who liked professional wrestling, it's like having. Um, Undertaker coming to hug you, man, and congratulating you for your work, man. That's, that's when I saw him tearing up. It was so awesome. And then the Beyond Good and Evil team, man, they said, thank you for sticking around with us for a long time, man. We appreciate you, man. It was more appreciative and emotional this time around, man. So Ubisoft had my attention because I liked most of the stuff they showed. The crew, Assassin's Creed, Mario's and Rabbits, Mario plus Rabbits, um, Fractured the whole, um, steep, and it was just a good E3 conference, man. You know, Ubisoft actually, you know, came out and did that thing, man. It was actually pretty good for them. So, my next, my next topic, we're gonna move on to Sony, man. And boy, do I have some things to say about Sony, especially one of those games they showed at E3. But I'll get to that later. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at um what's the other game? Oh, what's it come out? So Sony started off the E3 with DLC, um, expansion packs for Uncharted, which I I personally did not really. You know, therefore, I like the Uncharted. I love the Uncharted series, actually. But I, I just didn't um, was really feeling the DLC, man. And it was just there. It was just there for the fact of just you know trying to put a girl and um, have as the main protagonist of Uncharted, man. I didn't, I didn't really feel it all too much. But the game, but the um, the DLC does look awesome. Um. Hoping that Sony, you know, 
gonna take the time with the DLC man. This me needs it, but it's 2017 release, and then they had an expansion for Horizon Dawn Zero. Could care less about that game. Horizon Dawn Zero. I just don't. I, you know what, guys? I'll be honest with you. I just don't like cinematic games. You know, game of us. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's just those type of games. Um, um, one of the games that kind of, kind of caught my attention. It showed us off last year, but it was um called Day Is Gone. So they showed it. It didn't catch my attention the first time around. So when they showed it, it was like wow. Like it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool what they showed, and you know what they showed was awesome. So so I'm okay with this game now being shown, but it's it's 2018, man. It's a 2018, man. The way they were spending this much time on this game, I could have sworn it was a 2017 game, man. It, but day is gone, man. And it's it's coming out um, in 2018. Okay. Okay, guys. So the next, you know, game I'm going to talk about, man. I think I'm going to get a lot of flack for this game because I'm basing my information, what I've heard about this game, off a rumor. Okay. So, Microsoft, not Microsoft, Sony um, showed off Monster Hunter Worlds. Okay. So there have been rumors floating around that um, Sony was trying to, you know, get a Monster Hunter on PlayStation 4, you know. So, I didn't really take into the rumor because I thought it was Monster Hunter 5. I was like, hey, look, Sony messed up the first time. You, really, you actually think that um, Capcom is actually going to put Monster Hunter on PS4 after um, Street Fighter 5? So, I took a look at the information last night that was given. And the information last night, man, it really, 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 really got me mad, man. That information last night really peed me off. Okay, so let me explain the information that I got. I read. So I looked at the leak, okay? So that leak that came out about the uh, PlayStation 4 um, getting the Monster Hunter game, yeah, it's true. It's true. I thought it was exclusive, what I heard from. And apparently it's not exclusive. I thought it was Monster Hunter 5 because the leak said Monster Hunter 5. Okay. So it says Monster Hunter 5. What am I to do? All right, I'm I'm already already mad at this game already. I'm not really a big fan of what's going on with this game already. The information last night peaked me off. What more can I say? Monster Hunter game. Start off like that. Um, Monster Hunter World started off at, as a Nintendo Switch game, apparently. So, Sony's, um, Sony and Microsoft, not Microsoft, Camcom got together, you know, Sony wrote that, uh, Sony wrote that check, and Sony got the game. The contract, however, <laughs> the contract to this game, actually, says they don't care if it comes to Xbox One or, um, PC. But the contract did state, <laughs> well, it can't come to Switch. Oh, okay. So I'm like, why was that a center? Why just the Switch? Why was the Switch just mentioned? What about Xbox One? And, um, you know, but you know what, man? Again, this is a Western style Monster Hunter game. And let's be honest here it's a spinoff. So the spinoff. Uh, Monster Hunter. Sony paid for a spinoff on Monster Hunter from Camcom, and I think they got their best desserts with this game, honestly. But Sony, not knowingly so, just gave um, uh, Microsoft the ultimate my, um, my Monster Hunter game for Xbox. So it's a Western style Monster Hunter game. It's coming to Xbox and PC. Okay, so the Switch can't have a port of it. 
Switch is getting Monster Hunter Double Cross as a replacement. Okay, so it's not the traditional Monster Hunter game. So I found this kind of funny because it's 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 a it's a mess up deal. It's a it's a raw deal, man. It's a big raw deal. But Sony paid for it, and they should have washed out. So after reading all this information out the leak, I was like, do I take this into account, or do I just do I take this into account, or just you know make sure it's real? But it's looking pretty dang on real. So I say, this is true. Then Sony, you just messed up. <laughs> You just messed up big time. They wanted to appeal to Western audience, and if you look at that trailer at Monster Hunter Stories, Monster Hunter Story is a Western style Monster Hunter game, and since it's a Western style game to try to appeal to, you know, the Western crowd, one, uh, it's a it's a spin off of Monster Hunter. And a Western style one at that, and that one, to, it's, it's, it, uh, when I saw that trailer, I was like, this is not Monster Hunter. This is not Monster Hunter. The only reason I could tell it was Monster Hunter, when the, uh, when the animations came a little bit clearer, of the person that was moving, I said, the graphics are beautiful here. I wonder what kind of game this is. And when those animations of, you know how, like, the Monster Hunter characters move in a distinct way. It's hardly unrecognizable. So when they so when the um so when Monster Hunter characters start moving, man, they got this little stiff movement to them, which I thought was funny. But oh my, this is where they messed up at, man. Monster Hunter story, man, and. I saw the gun, the grappling hook, the gameplay, and said, this is not Monster Hunter. Why do they have a gun here? Why does this have a gun? This this, this, this game should not have no gun, no grappling hook. Because this is not Monster Hunter, man. I thought they fight with swords, spears, arrows, and other stuff, man. Why on the heck are the um, are there gunplay in Monster Hunter? So... I'm sitting here confused as man scratching my head. I'm like, what the heck is this, man? This is not this I, I, I can't approve of this man. I mean like I I like the Monster Hunter series as a whole, but I was not feeling the game at all, bro. So with this all said, man, Monster Hunter is a PlayStation, Xbox One, um, um, PC, it's coming out next year for PlayStation 4. I'm sorry to spend so much time, it was just this, this information, man, it had me puzzled. I don't know if to believe it or not, but the information that had me puzzled this mess, man. It's, it's kind of, man, I find it unnecessary to do something like this. But hey, what you can expect, man. Some of them want to play dirty, man. They got a little bit of dirt on their hand, man, at the same time. Never play dirty. It will come back to bite you in the butt, man. So, what can I say? I can't say. I can't say nothing, to be honest with you, man. Because, you know what? This is the hand that they dealt. And the hand they dealt, the hand they received. So, I'm going to move on with Sony and I think I spent enough time that's a, no, that's a deal, man. It's coming to PS4, it's coming to PS4. Hey, just play it there and be happy. You feel me? But no, I, I kept reading on more and more of the information. Why wow, I found the information surprised me. So, I'm going to move on. Let's talk about this, um, Detroit becoming human. The game looked a lot more interesting this time around, man. So, instead of looking, that, that trailer that they showed last year for this game did not appeal to me at all. It was all cinematic and crap like that. I was like, what the? What is this game even about? I'm confused. What's going on? So, um, because Detroit, uh, Detroit 
becoming human is about these two like android these guys like these cybernetic androids man they come in to this place and they're they're they want to start a revolution because they're being sold you know as like <laughs> as like personal use as like this any sort of regular technology so because of that they want to start a revolution and they did not like to see the black their people like that so there's a start a revolution and that's the best place i can sum up the story that's why i got from the trailer last night now the game looks like it's going to uh, be a little bit more how can i say play heavy so I'm, so i'm glad that it wasn't the vr title that i was expecting which I'll get into that in a minute. But screw VR, man. It's VR. Oh my god. Sony, you and VR, what is with you? Can I give it a already? I mean, VR is not as big as you think it is, but but your games, man. Your games have like better potential as being standalone games. And I hate that developers are trying to push simple titles that did not belong in a platform, or, or like get like platformers. I hate that they're trying to, how can I say, submit that as a VR game. It really tees me off, man, when I see this kind of stuff, man. I'm sitting here looking at uh, this VR stuff. Like, Why is a platformer a VR game? Man, Sony, my lord, bruh. I can't stand the VR segment on Sony, man. It's, 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 it's trash. It, it, it was a trash VR segment, man. Ah. Uh. Oh, got it, so. Ah, uh, no, okay, I need cannon. Okay. So the VR segment on Sony, man, is bullcrap. <laughs> so. I didn't really enjoy the Sony's presentation as much, man. A lot of this stuff, it didn't make no sense to talk about it. It's not even coming out this year, man. So, my PS4 may be dry for the year, man. It may be dry for the year. You know what? I still got the Call of Duty to play. I still got, you know, Madden to buy, NBA Live to buy. But, my PlayStation is dry for it, for, for this year, man. I'm not interested in that. Who is? I don't care how much you try to um, hype it up. Neck is not, you know, nobody's on the What What other game is there to play with PlayStation this year, man? And that goes for Microsoft, too. A lot of this stuff was confusing. Was this stuff even exclusive to Microsoft Xbox or not? It was just wishy washy everywhere. So, I don't care for, um, Microsoft, man, or PlayStation this year to buy stuff for it. So, Sony, you get a D in my book because I don't have nothing to play this year. Plus, what you do have coming out this year, that the Uncharted and um, what was the other sprint pack? Oh, Frozen Wilds, um, Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn, Horizon, uh, the, the expansion packs, man, it's. Huh? 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 So last, so last night, so yeah, that conference I keep getting interrupted. I had to cut up the mic. So okay, let's go ahead and um go on. To what else they showed, man. You know, it wouldn't be fair if I just cut everything out. <sighs> they showed Marvel vs. Capcom last night, and you know what, man? I'm semi hyped for that game. I don't know if I really want that. Give me a second.
I mean, they show off more characters last night. They show off the um the story last night, and they're not really interested in the story, man. The story to me kind of sucks. It's that basic, oh yeah, I'm trying to be a all powerful god and stuff. Yeah, they that kind of story, which sucks. This is stupid. I uh, I don't care how many times you tell that story. It's generic. It's a generic story for any kind of game. Man, it hey, doesn't my basic of honest opinion. Three um, unless. Unless you know the story actually interests me, then I don't really care. But <laughs> the story of Marvel vs. Capcom is basic. It looks like just way just to all the characters. Hmm? Which I, which, you know, I really don't. Oh, careful. So, when you actually look at the, um, okay. the game and what is it actually offering it, a lot of people are mad about what the, the characters they have already announced, including me, man. I mean, I love the fact that they have Black Panther in there versus, um, you know, Black Panther, Nova. I didn't really see Nova, but I'm surprised Arthur in there. And, you know, Arthur from, um, Ghost and Goblins, Dante is back. Man, if you want to talk about some ugly character models, oh, I messed up there. Yeah. If you want to talk about some ugly character models, my god, you want to. <laughs> oh, man, no character models look ferocious. Well, I mean, ferocious, I, I mean, like, they look fuggy, if anything. It's, oh man, I'm sorry if I sound like a douche about it, but man, I'm, I've never seen character models with a face so, you know, terrifying, man, they look all dead inside, man, I saw, uh, I was watching somebody, I saw somebody, um, watching, um, not watching it, but somebody posted a picture on Twitter last night of the character models for the, for the faces for um, Chris, Chung Lee, Dante, and um, what's that? What's another one? Chris, Dante, Chung Lee. Oh, and Morgan, and Morgan. And I was looking at those um, the character models, I mean, those the faces. Stuff of nightmares. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, that was so hilarious. I mean, like, I, I myself is genuinely surprised at what kind of crack this um, Capcom is smoking over there, man. But those models, man, they are not pretty, man. So with, with Mark, with, uh, with um, Marvel versus Capcom being dead, Dragon Ball Z killed it. Let's be honest. It's just kind of calm. The kill is all. Um, they still use a zero in Dante, which I appreciate from the um from the third from, uh, from the third game, which you know I appreciate greatly. I'm so I'm kind of glad. That um Dante, Dante and um, Zero is coming back. This whole, you know, Sigma with um, Ultron thing, man, just not working out, man. And you know what, man? This, what's funny about this time is they have Thanos working with them. So I'm like, is this injustice or... Is this injustice or what is it, man? It, 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 it's, it's a strange game, man. Right now, I'm not feeling too, you know... Happy about um, Marvel vs. Capcom. I really think the game is purity crap. I really think the game is. Yeah, you know, Sony keeps hyping up to be. Uh, cause it's not Marcus. Not it's not um Capcom who hyping it up. It's Sony who's hyping it up. You know, screw that star. I will get it on the next round. So. Oh, I'm still at this level. So pff, let's move on from that game. They they announced the game. I forgot the name of it. 
Oh, the, oh yeah, that announced God of War last night. Yes, God of War was awesome. That trailer for God of War, you know, it has me psyched for 2018, man. It's gonna be one heck of a year for 2018 for Sony, man. It's like Sony, they had the games already. They already announced all the 18 games this year. Uh, most of them that I'm interested in, some I'm not, and you know what? Some I'm just not um, feeling. Some games I'm just not feeling. Um, but 2018 seems like a pretty good year for um, PlayStation 4 on this game because y'all got Spider-Man coming next year, y'all got God of War, y'all got Shadow of the Colossus Remake, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Y'all got Shadow of the Colossus Remake, man? I took a picture with a Shadow of the Colossus statue at um, our, our town's um, Comic-Con. Last year, man, I posted the link to that on Twitter. I got the, I got the um, picture on Twitter, man. That's what I am. Um, you know, like I, I'm super stoked about that remake, man, being made. I only got some good games coming in 2018, but unfortunately, I have to suffer a 2017. So, with Sony, man. So, um, with Sony, it's all said and done. It's, it's, it's a D for them. Again, what they showed off was cool and all, but their games didn't excite me as much. But 2018 looking to be a better year for them. They just got to come hard next year. So, what's the next game I can... Oh, so, oh, so, so, what's the next thing I'm going to talk about? Well, of course, today was the heartless designer, man. They heartless for this one. So, what Nintendo did was they 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 had a Reggie talk a little bit. They had Fiza May talk, and you know how Fiza May like to run his mouth, man. They had Reggie or Fiza May come out. Reggie or Fiza May come out the Waterworks with the um with the um, scissor reel uh, competitive games. A lot of people don't get that that was a competitive game. Man, I, I was expecting um, Nintendo to talk about the esports scene since they still showed a lot of esports games, man. They showed um, Rocket League, FIFA, Platoon, and Pokemon. Which, my, 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 I, I, I couldn't, you know, contain myself, man. You know, it was good to see Rocket League come to the Switch. They showed it, they teased it first, and then they're going to try to um, bring it up like, oh, yeah. Rocket League is coming to the Switch. They're wrong. They haven't announced for you. That was basically Rocket League's announcement trailer. So that was a surprise, man. And when it was all said and done, man, it's, the hit started coming out as soon as Reggie was done talking, man. And you know, as soon as Reggie was done talking, oh man, oh, I hate the automatic levels in this game. So. Well, the first game they premiered off was Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I am an anime love right now with the sword. <laughs> no, seriously. The sword is gorgeous. I mean, the sword is, a, is technically a human being. Like Five, but I don't like Five. Five is annoying. <laughs> oh my. I, I forgot the names and everything, man. But Xenoblade Chronicles, like, pretty good. I mean, they're they're still polishing up the game. They say, oh yeah, man. On Treehouse 5, they, they said they're still polishing up the game, man. They ain't done with the game. Not yet, man. Which I understand, man. They ain't done with the game. They ain't done with the game. No rush. Please don't rush your development. That's awesome you ain't done with the game. But they say, oh yeah, man. The, the polish between the games, man, it's, 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 it's still going on. I hate this level. Oh, it's how can I say? I, it's it's good. It's, it's 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 a good RPG, man. The story is, um, we're taking the sword to Elysium, a place called Elysium, and we the sword's driver. I mean, I mean, the sword is a girl, and the, and the protagonist is a guy. So when I saw them, 
reaching out for the like the crest that was on her chest. I was like, what the world? This girl got some got some bangers on the chest, and you had this guy over here reaching to a crest. Have you know anime art style? You know it had something. If anything, man, the anime art style went to Xenoblade Chronicles X instead of um the original, man. So. So Xenoblade Chronicles, man, I'm I'm hyped for that game, man. Like, wow. I, it comes out this year. A lot of people saying, man, I don't believe Nintendo's going to release that game out this year. Watch it get delayed to 2018, man. It's still time to get delayed to 18, man. That game is finished. It's just getting polished up right now. That and getting polished up. That's all they're doing right now. So. Why I don't want to believe, I'll be honest, why I don't want to believe that um, the game is uh, is, um, getting delayed, man, it's, 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 how can I say it for me, it's, yeah, I just want to play this game already, man, I just want to play it, I can't speak about it right now, man, but I really do love to play Chronicles, um, uh, to art style already, man. The game looks fun, and I was watching the Treehouse presentate the um, gameplay system. The uh, it wasn't at first I couldn't recognize the play the play system because you know you got the uh, the arts, but the arts have been in like have a totally different look to them, so I couldn't recognize them because of that. And now I'm looking at the arts. Plus, uh, they, they they present the arts. Like all with the face buttons, man. Like the face buttons, like you, you know, in a, in a Xenoblade Chronicles game, like they like to do. But the um, the arts, in, like it's configured into this little tiny like square model now. That like have like you have to push the um the face buttons, you know, to attack and stuff like that, man. A lot of people thought it was turn based the first time around because the fact that the um, you know, I would have thought it was turn based as well. It it, it did look turn based. But it's not turn based. You're still moving in real time and all that stuff, man. So I'm I'm happy about that. So the next game they showed off was a surprise to many, and I know Ted from Brain Scratch commentary is going to love it. <laughs> it's Kirby. Kirby is coming, and no, no goofy spin off or nothing like that. No, it's a game for Switch. No, it wasn't the 3DS game. No, it was a mainline Kirby game for Switch, and the game looks incredibly beautiful, man. It's it's a side scroller. That looks amazingly beautiful. I mean, Kirby, this is the best. So, with that being said, Kirby is coming out 2018. Um, what, the next game that got announced took many by surprise. Now, we all heard that Retro was working on something, but they're not working on this game. They're not working on Metroid Prime 4, which got announced today. It got teased today. I mean, I thought it was, uh, I didn't know what game it was, but I mean, I thought, at first I thought it was Star Fox Zero coming to the Switch, then out of nowhere, um, Metroid Prime 4, it, 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 you know how like the phase line had that blue um, cloud of smoke behind it? Yeah, with that game, it got like, it, it I can't say it. It was just so good to have Metroid Prime announced. Oh my man, Metroid Prime was announced. Everybody went crazy. I went crazy. I fell to the floor over Metroid Prime Four being announced. I was like, "Oh snap! They're gonna show gameplay." They didn't show no gameplay, so I, I wasn't I wasn't mad at all. They didn't show no gameplay about it, but I was just happy they got announced. And then Pokemon got announced to be in the work, so. Oh no! Pokemon's in the work too? Oh snap! Nintendo pulling out all the guns. They're making sure everything get announced here. Yeah. Pokemon, um. It, w it was crazy. Metroid, Pokemon, all they get announced, man. Xenoblade Chronicles getting release dates. And then. You have. Oh my god. One of the best things ever. To come out the direct man, you have Fire Emblem Warriors. It looked so good, and I felt like I was, 
I wasn't that close to it. It was a, a good looking game, man. I swear, man. I was gushing over um the game, man. I was gushing over um Fire Emblem Warriors, man. It's so beautiful, man. I just want to play it, man. It's so good. It looks so good. Fire Emblem Warriors, man. And it's fully voiced at, uh, at, at and it's freaking um. Mars is in the game with his English voice for the first time. Well, no, not really because I think and, um, Fire Emblem um, and Code and Steam he had an English voice actor. But still, it makes the purpose. The game looks good. It looks good. It looks good. <laughs> That's all that matters. It looks awesome. I I am so in love with um with that game so far. I'm in love with Fire Emblem Warriors. I just want to see more of it. Well, it was on Treehouse today. I watched a little bit of it. And I liked it. It had a... It, it, the trailer looked so cool. I, I don't get the story so far, but I will get that story down when I see it. So, Yoshi got another new game. I'm saying yes! Yoshi is coming to Switch. I said Yoshi is... The reason why I say this is because it looks like a Yoshi's, um, Yoshi story. It looks like Yoshi's story. How did I say it? Yeah, it looks like Yoshi's story. But you have a new flipping mechanic that flips the world, like flips it, like from side to side. Like it was, I, I, I can't, I can't describe it to you. But the, it, it was cool. It was like it was using paper. It looked like it was using Paper Mario. Um. Color splash graphics, but with a fluffy, um, with a fluffy um, Yoshi. So with a fluffy Yoshi, yeah, I'm thinking to myself of the Yoshi, the new Yoshi game for Switch. It looks freaking awesome. I want to play it. I don't know about you guys, but I want to play it. Yoshi, if Yoshi is basically baby me. I don't know how to say it, man, but. Yoshi, I always have a soft spot for Yoshi games, man. I don't care how bad they get or how good they look. Um, Yoshi games are awesome. So, with that said, man, Yoshi, the, the new game for um, Switch, man, I can't wait to play it, man. It comes out 2018. That's another one game. So, another 2017 game that Nintendo has premiered off was, um... It wasn't Smash. Smash was not nowhere near the story. I don't know why people kept talking about Smash. Smash coming this year, man, guys. Just hold on. Smash coming, man. It has to come. Yeah, Smash. I think it's coming this soon, this soon. I was being real with you, man. Smash is coming. I don't think it's coming this soon. And personally, it kicked up my hope. Another hope I had that Smash is um, coming to Switch. It's just being development as a new game and not a port. You know, that's just... That's just my overall hot thing man, right now. So with this, so with Smash coming, um, so not Smash, not Smash not being announced. Okay, so Rocket League again supposed to be announced for um, Switch. So, so next thing, man, that really got people excited for Nintendo, man, and they ended the, um, and they ended the. Um, the direct in such a fascinating way, man. I said direct with a spotlight. Oh my god. Mario Odyssey. What in the world? Bruh, I was like, oh my god, that Dino Fossil Hunter game is coming to Switch. That's my first thought when I saw it. And then out of nowhere, I saw the hat, that the, the new hat, Cappy, that was on Mario's head. Yeah, I'm seeing him take over stuff, man. I'm like, what in the world is this game? This game is amazing. It showed off a new dinosaur level and everything. I'm over here fanboying over it. I'm over here gushing about it. I put it on Facebook and everything. I recorded the trailer on my phone. Oh my god, I was so happy about Super Mario Odyssey, man. The game looks so good, and I was, and I'm just loving the game. I'm glad it's a holiday title. I will definitely put down my Christmas stuff if I have to, man. I'm 23 years old and I'm not afraid of yeah, putting Mario on my Christmas list, man. That game was going to me, man, for Christmas. Mario Odyssey is a delicious uh, treat and it comes out in October. 
That game is done. It's coming out in October. And Super Mario Odyssey, man, the, the levels that they show off the new suits, the the um, the sombrero and all that stuff, man, all that good stuff, man. It's just amazing, man. And Pauline's back as the mayor of New Donk City. Wow, man. I'm so impressed with Super Mario um, Odyssey, man. I've never been so impressed with a game in my life. I mean, if you go look at that trailer, the music, the settings, and all that stuff, man, it hits all the right tones for Mario. So, with that being said, man, that was the end of the spotlight. But they had more to show off at the treehouse, man. At the, at the time of this um, recording, I just got done watching um, the reveal Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser Minions, which is like a little spin, which is like a remake and a plus a little spin off for the Mario and Luigi series. So, y'all yeah, play on um, the Game Boy original, you're playing it on um, 3DS now, it's, it's a remake. But the biggest remake that surprised us all was the first thing they had to show on Treehouse Live was the Metroid 2 remake. I would rather play the official. Then that fan made game, man. I don't care, but that was a fan made Metroid game. I'd rather play the official game. And it looked like the official game will have newer stuff instead of just a newer graphical change, man. So I'm liking what they're showing off at E3. So Nintendo had me hyped the whole time. They was not only showing off my favorite franchises, but they was also showing off games that I was already excited for in 2017. And this 2017 games already got me happy as men, so I'm saying, hey look man, 2017 uh, right now looks awesome for the Switch, and I need to find me a Switch, man, because this E3 convinced me that the Switch is the place to be in 2017. I'm leaving, if, I, if I get a Switch this year, I'm leaving out of 2017 with um, Lord Spare My Life, I'm, I'm leaving out of 2017 um, with those games, plus knowing that in 2018 I got Fire Emblem, Kirby, Yoshi, hey, Metroid, all coming soon, and Pokemon. I'm already knowing that the Switch is the place to be for 2018 and 19. So far, Microsoft has not convinced me on their consoles, man. I got an Xbox One. Best believe I'm buying lots of hundred dollar stories for Xbox One. I'm just over right now man the amount of stuff that's on switch and the fact that I'm trying to get a switch this made my decisions on a whole lot easier man it's just amazingly awesome how E3 has convinced me that the switch is the place to be and I love how we just not getting rehashes of um, Wii U games man we just getting straight up new games this whole thing I mean yeah Pokemon tournament was mentioned but really who really cared what everybody was caring about was the fact that, hey, look, man, you just said the magic words. Pokemon is coming to Switch. That's what everybody was wanting to hear, and you said it. So, for Nintendo's E3 plus Treehouse, I got to include Treehouse. Oh, yeah, and they're doing a the buttload of tournaments. So, with that, plus Nintendo um, Treehouse and the stream and everything, Nintendo. For the first time since 2014, you have won E3, grading you an A++, and that's fanboyism, man. I'm over here favoring Nintendo right now, man, because they, because again, they not only show games that I'm interested in, but they show games that are coming out in 2017 that I can pick up and play this year, and I think that's just amazing and incredible. And they showed me some stuff on 3D. One thing I forgot to skip over was the Zelda DLC, which they showed everything that they talked about in Zelda DLC in action. So be on the lookout because that, next, that first piece of DLC comes out in July and the next piece comes out in December. So it's the next DLC. We finally got what we're going to know what the story is going to be about for that. It's going to be about the champions. And I'm personally happy for that. I can't wait to play that. For the fact that it's gonna be a I'm, I'm, 
I'm so happy for um, Nintendo's E3, man. It was, it was, it was, a, it's a, it was a ray of hope, basically, for Nintendo fans, man. And you know what, man? I would rather say it any other way because what they showed was truly amazing. It represented what Nintendo truly is. And Reggie had to remind people that, hey, look, man, we're trying to make games about fun and intuitive business now. People are, some people are, like, want to want to act ignorant over that fact, man. I saw some people on 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 on, um, on the Nintendo channel. I was like, man, it's too kitty for me, man. It's too kitty for me, man. Please, if y'all worry about your age, please put down the controller, put down the sticks. Don't play no video games, man. If you're too concerned and too manly to play a game like Mario or Kirby, then how manly are you to play a game like Call of Duty or or, or Mass Effect, man? Those games are, in spirit, still video games, man. Rather you, you like it or not, they're still video games, man. So take it as you will. And people still have that stigma that video games are for kids. <laughs> but I digress. Man, but, man, Nintendo made me happy, man. It was, It's not me being a Nintendo fanboy. It, it sound like it, but it's not me being a Nintendo fanboy about it. It's the fact that Nintendo deliberately show me why I should be in their house this year. Yeah, man, I show me the reason why I should be in the house next year. And next year's gonna be the same with Kirby and Yoshi, Metroid, and Pokemon. Ooh, imagine what they're gonna have planned when they show that Fire Emblem off, man. So that, I can already tell you, Nintendo's E3 for next year is already lit. Like this E3 was. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it off here. So let's recap right quick before I go over Sonic. Okay, so let's group. So, Ubisoft, B plus. Sony, D plus. Nintendo, A plus plus. So, that's my how I feel about this year at E3. So, before I end out, let's talk about Sonic. Okay, so Sonic didn't really get no new trailer, but got one new trailer, but got a lot of gameplay. So, Sonic Mania. And forces got a good amount of gameplay, man. So about seven minutes of each, man, showing off um, Park Avenue, showing off Park Avenue of um, class, uh, not class, uh, modern Sonic stage, and they're showing off. Um, they only show a tidbit of that. For some reason, they only wanted to show off a tidbit of it. They did not want to show the other level, man. But we seen class. We seen, seen Green Hill um, Zone of the other Sonic, uh, of classic Sonic, and um, Eleven Man, like the Aaron. You don't stop and just show off the rest of that Sonic level, man. It ain't gonna kill you to show off the rest of Sonic, man. I mean, like, ah, oh, run off again. Oh. Uh, it ain't gonna kill you just to show off a little bit more, man. Hey, whatever, man. He was just, he was deliberately just not showing off enough for me, man. That was peeing me off the whole time. You know what I'm saying to myself, man. Say, they don't let this man come back to E3 no more, man. Cause we thought we were gonna get in the full reveal of um, what's the stage, Park Avenue, and we got the Green Hill. We got a boss fight um, for Classic Sonic, which Air Dragoon, which is one of my personal favorite boss fights from Sonic. Um, generations and um, Unleash, Air Dragoon, the classic, you know, ball and chain, Eggman, boss fight, but with a twist. It's a chainsaw. That's it. <laughs> That's the only um, twist. Oh, and I, and I guess it's a twist because it goes into the Air, Dra uh, Air Dragoon, man. So. So. Man, man, what, 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 it's, it's, um, the Sonic um, was showing off, man. So, my disappointment came in from Sonic Mania side of things, man. Sonic Mania, man, they only showed off Green Hill Zone Act 2 boss, which is basically Death Egg. Again. <laughs> Death Egg, everybody. Again. So, with that said, man, Sonic, your, your games, your games, they already caught my eye in the pill. I really like what's going on with your games. I love it. Let's uh, let's keep it going. But so far, I say the man for you. How you um, how 
Aaron Webber handled the whole Sonic thing, man. He could have showed a little bit more, man. It's E3, man. That's what you present a lot of. Man, like Spider-Man. Spider-Man had an amazing demo. I cannot believe that game is coming so soon. I really like the demo of that game. That game is awesome. But man, Sonic Mania and showed off the Green Hill for the the crit character, the created character, all that stuff. This just I just gotta give you a a C on that, Sonic. I gotta give you a C on that. Because I wanted to see more, man, because this is E3. I thought we were getting full of reveals, new zones and everything, man. But no, we've got a couple of boss fights, um so they show how the interface stuff look of the game and all that stuff. It wasn't much, but it was stuff that we already seen before, and I was wondering what, what Sega showed off for Sonic. I mean, this is E3, man. You know, everybody's excited about Sonic, man. Sega, you should have said Sonic about Sonic. We was waiting to see first cutscene and everything, man. But I guess I'll save that for Summer of Sonic, somewhere down the line. I don't know. I think last year was the last Summer of Sonic. I don't know, uh, correct me on that. But if they do show that Summer of Sonic event, then cool. Cool. I'm okay with that. So, at the end of the stream, I'm going on and on. I'm talking on and on and on. I already spent too much time on other topics, man. It's about time to end the stream. My mouth is starting to hurt. And my mouth is starting to run dry. So, Let's go ahead and end the stream, man. So, all in all, man, E3, uh, overall E3, man, it was just things, the moments that captured everybody, man, here, man. But I'll say that for another talking play. I'll say that for next week talking play. When E3 is officially over, it's easier to clear the room and see, um, watch all the trailers and catch on with, like, little things, man. It's going to be cool, man. With next talk, man, it's a discussion talk. All the way, we're gonna talk about E3 as a whole, man. We're not gonna just talk about everybody. Just talk. We're not gonna just talk about this specific E3 or that specific E3. Now nah, we're talking about E3 as a whole, man. Because I got something to say about E3 as a whole, man. It's gonna be good. It's, it's gonna be a good discussion. So, again, let me recap my grades. Sonic C, Sonic C plus. Ubisoft B plus, Sony D plus, and I gotta watch the other videos, but um, Nintendo A plus plus, man. I it's not my bias. It's because a lot of the stuff that they show, I really got hyped for, man. Nintendo man.